Uh, Grace Tang uh, is... Um, oh, great. Grace is actually going to tell us where all those uh, tchotchkes that you bought at the market are going to end up. Um, so she's uh, associated at uh, field operations, and uh, she's ready for us. Fantastic. Please, a hand of applause. We, we are very close to being done, so let's pump up the volume as the sound. Thank you. Good evening. Um, okay, so I came across this report recently. Um, this is a, uh, it was put out by the City of New York in 1951 um, by Robert Moses, our good friend, uh, when he was Parks Commissioner of New York City. And what this is, is the initial proposal for Fresh Kills Landfill. Uh, Fresh Kills Landfill is known to be one of the largest landfills in the world. Um, it opened in 1951 for about 50 years, and uh, the reason why uh, Fresh Kills was selected is because it was an area of low-lying land. Um, all the landfills in New York basically were just marshes filled in um, with garbage. So the plan was that uh, garbage would be brought to Lower Manhattan, transferred onto barges, and then towed across the New York Harbor and down Arthur Kill Creek. Kill means creek in Dutch, by the way, um, and down to the southwestern part of Staten Island. Um, so like I said, it operated for 50 years. Um, the last barge was in March of 2001. So actually this year we celebrated the 10th anniversary of its closing. Um, and to mark the anniversary, Parks Department um, actual, and sanitation actually brought a barge of trees, a ceremonial tree planting, to put on the site, um, you know, to sort of mark the, the, this anniversary. So 10 years later, we're still developing the park. Uh, it's not open yet to the public, um, but as part of the, the ceremonial trip, we actually took a water taxi along the south uh, southern shore of Staten Island, and if you can see from the map, it's actually really industrial along most of the shoreline, but then when you hit Fresh Kills, it turns into this big green space. So this is uh, Robert Moses' plan for Fresh Kills back in 1951, and if you see, uh, there's actually large parcels of residential development um, on most of what is now the mounds of garbage with parkland uh, along the river's poof. Here we flash forward to 2001 when we developed the master plan. We decided, forget the residential, let's just put park here. Um, well, actually it was the effort between parks and planning and sanitation that this would be turned into parkland because now we had uh, you know, hundreds of feet of garbage where we couldn't develop any residential. Um, and so as part of our master plan, uh, we had this, you know, landscape idea where we would ring the bases of the landfill mounds with forests and keep the centers of them as meadows and grasslands. Um, so when you go to visit Fresh Kills, which you can go to uh, with Parks Department on a guided tour, you can't go there on your own yet, um, but when you go there, it's really, really actually quite beautiful. Um, it's, uh, you know, this big open landscape which has relics of the industrial past. There's, you know, dots of, polka dots of wells and machinery sort of dotting the landscape. There's this is a view of uh, the East Mound getting closed. Um, so there's a lot of really interesting historical elements that are still there. This is another shot of the East Mound. East Mound is the oldest of the trash mounds. There's four altogether. They're closing it as we speak. So when you go there, you actually see little dump trucks driving up and down the hills, dumping dirt, laying down this plastic matting. So when we and got involved within the project, when we got involved with the project for the master plan, um, you know, the industrial sort of character of the site was a big inspiration. So this is one of our first ideas that we had, which 
is you know set to happen this we're going to build in the next year or two this is a, a sign that uh, we made on you know strapping it to the side of a, a piece of machinery that would basically advertise the park so a lot of what we've been doing is also try to change the perception of what the park is because Staten Islanders are you know not very happy about the park and even though it's you know set to be parkland, they're also very bitter about the past. Um, so another idea that we had as part of the master plan was this idea of making soil. Um, this is 2,200 acres, um, part of which is water, but that's about three and a half times the size of Central Park. So one of the ideas we have is to actually make soil on the on the on the site take uh, agricultural techniques of making soil and strip cropping them into it. Um, another set of projects that we've had, we're developing two 20-acre parks, and as part of that, we are literally going to be growing stuff for the park, that being trees, that being collecting seeds. Uh, where This is an image of a seed farm that we're going to be building on the site. So uh, the Native Plant Center, uh, in New York City is going to be growing uh, ultra-native Staten Island seeds and collecting them and then using them to seed all the meadows in the rest of the park. So a lot of what we're proposing in the early stages of Fresh Kills is really to build this place where, you know, the public can come and visit but also sort of see the park grow and uh, you know, sort of build the plant material and build the materials that will then eventually become the park. Um, you can visit the park, like I said, through the Parks Department. This is a kayak trip that they take people on every so often, and you can see in the background our flare stations, which are remnants of uh, the sanitations. Uh, you know, they, they take the methane and turn it into energy, and uh, those are flare stations. So um, I think when we think about Fresh Hills Park, this huge urban landscape, we really have to think of it on the scale of Robert Moses and the fact that you know this place was filled for 50 years, which isn't a long time, and the next 50 years, who knows what it could be? Hopefully, it'll you know become this great urban place for all of New Yorkers. Thank you.